Hello and welcome back. Today I want to talk about balance and specifically look at the two different modes of operation. So one way of characterizing balance is into voltage balance and current balance. But what really makes them different? Well, if you're curious, then keep watching. Depending on the application, you will be using one type of balun or the other. Some applications require the voltage balun, some the current one, and sometimes it doesn't really matter. But before looking at that in more detail, let's start things off by seeing what makes a balanced differential signal special. What are its properties and how can you check if a signal is or isn't balanced? So when looking at a differential signal pair, we can define it as two signals that are of the same voltage amplitude but 180 degrees phase shifted or phase inverted. When you take this signal and drive it into a balanced load, two identical loads in reference to ground, then the current will also end up being of the same amplitude and again phase inverted. Because of this the load is normally placed in between the two incoming signal lines and then just a more or less strong link to ground is provided. So for example in the case of a dipole antenna, the link to ground is purely parasitic. But in certain differential communication traces, the receiver will have some clear internal impedance to ground and then the impedance in between the lines can be inside or outside of the IC. And then you also have the case of dedicated terminations with stabilization networks. Point being that you want to pass your differential current through the termination not necessarily the ground, but you still need some sort of voltage reference connection in between the receiver and your termination. So one way to test just how differential a signal is can be done by checking how well the incoming current and voltage are matched to the outgoing one by providing a direct link to ground. If the two signals are perfectly matched, the voltages will be the same, but also there will be no signal going to ground. But if there is an imbalance, the difference in between the signals will be passing through the ground line. One observation to be made about this method is that since certain differential signals have a non-zero common mode voltage, the mirroring point is not zero but something else. So for this case, it's worth considering a large value capacitor in our termination network just to eliminate the common mode currents. So to verify this setup, let's perform a quick simulation with a clearly differential balance signal and a clearly single-ended unbalanced signal. So if we run the simulation and start with the single-ended signal, so we have our incoming signal that goes into our test load and we can see that the current going into R1 completely goes out R3 and there's almost no current going through R2, the second arm. So the balanced load is clearly not being driven correctly. If we now move to our differential signal, here the two sources are 180 degrees phase shifted. So with this V3 source, I added in this phase shift of 180 degrees into its definition. And well, we can check the two signals to see that they are of the same amplitude and well, in phase opposition. Next, we can also verify the current. So the current going through one arm and the current running through the other one, again, is of the same amplitude and in phase opposition. And finally, we can look at the current running towards ground, which is zero. So if we just look at this current, well, we have something in the femtoampere region, so this is just a simulation error. All of the current goes through R4 and R5. Next, to highlight the effect of common mode voltage, I used the same setup again, so the same differential signal with 180 degrees phase shift, but this time I added a DC offset voltage of one into the definition. So I have two circuits, one with the capacitor and one without the capacitor. So if we run these circuits to see how they work, so we have our two incoming signals with the one volt of offset and this one volt is present on the capacitor. So the capacitor voltage is one volt and well again if we look at the ground current it's in the femtoampere region. However if we move to the other circuit, the one with the ground link, so first of all, the offset is no longer one volt, it's around 0.60 something. 
The reason why this isn't 1 volt is because we do have a defined output impedance and well if we look to the ground connection this time we have a clearly non-zero 13 point something milliamperes. So the current running through the two branches is the same sine wave in phase opposition but this time it's centered around 6.5. So the ground current is double this at around 13. With the capacitor this ground current of course did not exist. So now it's time to look at some common examples of voltage and current balance to see exactly what's the difference. So I prepared the basic current balun and the basic voltage balun. And these are built using coupled inductors or in other words transformers. So if we run this setup with a 1 MHz input signal with the current balun if we look at the two voltages we see that they are of the same amplitude and in phase opposition and while the currents again have the same amplitude and are in phase opposition and the current going to ground is almost zero. And if we now look to the voltage balun, again the same story, same voltages, same currents and no current going to ground. So, so far there's no real difference between the two. However, there is one implementation of the voltage balun that does have a significant difference, which is DC isolation. So with this implementation, if we run the setup, again we see the same voltages and the same currents, so in phase opposition but same amplitude, and then no current going to ground. But under DC conditions, this implementation offers a clear isolation between the balanced and the unbalanced side. Something that cannot be said about the current valen, where there is a direct link through the upper inductor. So under DC conditions, the unbalanced signal source is directly connected to the balanced load. So to continue observing what makes the two different, we can analyze the behavior over a wider frequency range using an AC type of simulation. So if we run the setup like this, starting off with the current valen, if we look at the voltage on the two branches, we can see that the signal does become equal on both branches above a certain frequency, below which there is a very clear unbalance appearing. So this is visible both in the voltage amplitude, one signal is much larger than the other, but it's also visible in the phase information. So at very low frequency, there's very little phase difference between the two signals, and only above a certain frequency do we get our expected 180 degrees of phase shift. So the exact inductance value of our transformer will determine the minimum balancing frequency. Now on the other hand, if we move to our voltage balun, again plot out the two voltages, we can see that we get a slightly different effect. So the two outputs, both the green and the red one, are balanced regardless of frequency. But at lower frequencies, the transformer's magnetizing inductance is so small that it's shunting the input signal. So our nominal output is only obtained above a certain frequency. Now we can see that even at low frequency, both signals have the same amplitude and they keep the 180 degrees of phase shift, even if this phase has a different value in reference to our incoming signal. So at high frequency we have 0 and 180 degrees phase shift, whereas at lower frequencies it's plus minus 90. So in conclusion, both types of Balen, the current one and the voltage one, have a minimum operating frequency determined by the transformer's inductance, above which they behave the same, but below this frequency, the behavior is different. So there are certain differences between the two Balen types. But this still does not explain the naming. Why is one called a voltage Balen and the other a current Balen? Well, this becomes obvious when driving a slightly unbalanced load. So I took the setups from before and slightly changed the values in the load in reference to the ground connection point. So before the ground connection was exactly in the middle of the load, the load was perfectly balanced, but with these new setups, the ones on the bottom side, the loads are unbalanced. So if we run the simulation like this and recheck the voltages and currents, if we look at the current running through the current valen, we do see the balancing effect. So even though the load is unbalanced, the current still keeps its balance. But if we look at the voltages, here we can see a very clear difference appearing. So the side of the load with the smaller impedance 
has a lower voltage, whereas the side with the larger impedance has a higher voltage. If we turn to the voltage balon and we check the voltages, we can see that both of them are still the same, regardless of the load. But if we check the currents through the two branches, here we can see the very clear difference appearing. So the branch that has the larger impedance has the smaller current. Now, to understand why this is happening, we need to remember how the transformer works. For the current balon case, above a certain frequency, the current running through one winding causes an opposing and equal current in the other winding. Thus, the current on the output will always be the same, regardless of the voltage. Whereas in the voltage balon case, the two windings, being of the same number of turns, will have equal voltages on their terminals. So, regardless of current, the output will have the same voltage amplitude, but be in phase opposition. So the voltage balon will equalize the voltage, and the current balon will equalize the current. But the other electrical parameter will be determined by the load. So the voltage for the current balon and the current for the voltage balon will be load symmetry dependent. Now, one interesting observation that can be made is what happens to the ground link. How does this load imbalance affect the current that will end up going to ground? If we check the current balon and compare it to our balanced reference, we can see that more or less the same current is passing through both of these. So as frequency increases, the coupling between the two windings becomes stronger and stronger, and the ground current drops lower and lower. Whether we have a balanced load or an unbalanced load, there's not much of a difference. However, if we check the voltage balon case, when we had our balanced load, we had a very low, almost negligible current appearing, so the current through R10, whereas with our unbalanced load, any current that comes in through one branch and doesn't go out through the other goes to ground. So we have a very clear, very non-negligible current going to ground. This current will also cause a non-negligible voltage offset. So from the various simulations, we can determine a couple advantages and disadvantages. The voltage balon can be made to be DC isolated and it can provide balance at any frequency into a balanced load and the current balon, although it cannot isolate DC and it's not balancing at low frequencies, when it's used in its normal operating frequency, it will be able to drive even an unbalanced load and still not inject current into the ground. Now, if you want to look into a bit of detail, you will observe that both the basic current and the basic voltage balon are not perfect. So, because of the core loss and the magnetizing inductance, the current in the two branches of the current balon will never be equal. The current induced on the lower branch will always be smaller than the input current because of these other two currents which are not being transferred to the secondary side. And in a similar fashion, in the case of the voltage balon, the outgoing voltage on the bottom side will be smaller than the incoming voltage on the top side because of the various series losses. So the coupled inductance first of all receives a smaller voltage than is being input because of the series resistance and uncoupled inductance in the upper side, and on the bottom side the coupled voltage will not arrive at the output, but rather again you will have a set of losses from series resistance and uncoupled inductance. And the closest thing to something ideal is the isolated voltage balon, since here the voltage that gets coupled into the secondaries is the same voltage in both secondaries, and the final output voltage again passes through the same losses. So as long as the load that is being driven is the same, so it's balanced, then so will be the voltages and currents that arrive at the load. To check the different behavior between the voltage and the current balon, I prepared the setup right here, where I'm using the unbalanced output of a signal generator to drive a balon, and then measure its output using a oscilloscope. And as a test circuit, I'm using an old common mode choke that can be configured either as a voltage or current balon. Now, I already prepared the various measurements, so let's look at them in a bit more detail. So, the first thing to look at is the current balon driving a balanced load at a frequency where the balon is balancing. Now, before starting this, it's probably worth mentioning that the real components that I've used, both the resistors and the inductors, do have tolerances. So, if you look into it with enough detail, there will be various differences appearing. But anyway, if we ignore these small differences, 
then we can say that the signals on the two branches, so the channel 1 and channel 2, pink and yellow signals, are of equal amplitude and in phase opposition one in reference to the other. And well, the ground current, the blue line, which is measured on this ground connection resistor, has a almost zero voltage. So the current running through this resistor is more or less zero. If we move to the voltage balen with the same balanced load, again we can see a similar story. We have balanced signals, same amplitude and in phase opposition, and well, a more or less zero signal going to ground. Now, when we turn to the current balen driving an unbalanced load, so one of the branches has a 314 ohm resistor, whilst the other is 510, when we have the current balen, we can see that we have two different voltages on the two branches. So since the current is the same, but the resistances are different, we have a larger voltage on channel two, the pink one, where we have a large resistor and a smaller voltage on the first channel, the yellow one, where there's a smaller resistor. And as predicted by the simulation, if we look to the ground link, so the blue one, we still see more or less nothing. So all of the current running in through one branch is going on through the other. No current is going to ground. Finally, when we look at the voltage balen driving a similar unbalanced load, here we see the same voltages again on the two branches. So yellow and pink are again the same amplitude. But this time we see a very clear signal on the blue channel, which is in phase with the second channel of the oscilloscope. So since we have the same voltage on both branches, we have a larger current running in through R1 because the resistance is smaller and this current exits on the one side through the second branch and we can see it in phase opposition on channel one, the yellow one, but the rest of the current goes to ground through R3 and this is in phase with the incoming current. So that's why we see in phase signals on the pink and the blue channels. So at least at these chosen frequencies, the practical balen does work as predicted by the simulation. So, in general, the difference between the voltage and the current balen refers to the electrical parameter that is being balanced, the voltage or the current. Now, it's important to observe that all of the simulations performed today used ideal transformers, ideal coupling factors, no core loss, and no parasitics. Once you factor all of those in, certain new differences will appear when comparing the two balens. And at the same time, the exact way in which the transformer is built will also have a direct impact on the parasitics and well the behavior when used as a voltage or current balen. But that is a topic for another time. For now, hope you got some useful information after this, leave your thoughts in the comments, thank you for watching, make sure to subscribe to be up to date with all my videos, and see you next time. Bye bye.